Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a snow scene inspired by the paintings of the great Bob Ross. Um, even though his style isn't really the style that I like to paint in, I've always really, really admired his his ethos and his attitude and his way of encouraging people to paint. And one of the reasons that I'm here um, on the channel, on YouTube, is trying to share some of the things that I've discovered on my painting journey um, in the last uh, three and a half, nearly four years, um, that have um, made my painting life a lot easier. And trying to sort of share tips and tricks so that people can come along and just have a go and really enjoy painting. So this one's for the late great Bob Ross. Um, my paper is Saunders Waterford, um, cold pressed. It's a quarter imperial sheet. It's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. Now I've just painted a graduated sky wash by um, mixing together cerulean blue, cobalt blue and a tiny touch of Prussian blue to make a nice clean cold sky and I've just used a large wash brush, a harky brush, to sweep it across the top of the page, um, adding a little bit more water to thin the paint down so that it graduates and gets paler towards the horizon. I then turned it on its side and just to keep the any kind of lines or shading in the sky fairly horizontal and then I dried it off. Once dry um, I'm going to start painting some happy little trees. Bob Ross style conifers but I'm not going to be using the fan brush like he does um, or his big brush. Um, I'm going to be using this small Chinese calligraphy brush and um, I've got a mixture of all the blues that I use for the sky and sepia and some Payne's Grey and I'm dipping into all those different colours with my calligraphy brush and I'm just starting from the top of the tree and sort of dotting and dabbing and sort of scribbling carefully but fairly loosely just bringing it down in this kind of um, triangular spiky edged conifer tree shapes just um, as Bob Ross would say the indications of trees um, these ones are in the middle distance so I'm just going to get these established first and get a bit of a bank in of these trees just on the right side in the mid ground and then we'll put some distance in once I've decided um, that I like these trees Going to vary the height of the trees a little bit so they're not all the same size not quite evenly spaced together either but still dipping into those colors and occasionally dipping the brush into water and just softening back in some areas and allowing the colors to sort of blend and mix on the page so creating a sort of wet in wet environment for the trees um, rather than painting every single leaf just kind of painting them in roughly and loosely just going to sweep with a squirrel mop underneath the bottom just to allow the paint from the base of each of these trees just to run a little bit and to sort of become one with the landscape I'm going to continue to use what the paint that's on the brush, um, on the squirrel mop, that I've just picked up a little from the palette and just sweep it across um, the foreground and the midground just to create some snow shadows. I'm leaving a lot of unpainted paper for the snow. 
Um, so what I'm painting in are like the shadows and the sort of the, the, the lay of the land. We just need, need another tree or two just to come over across the right edge, bring it across the tape so that once the tape's removed that tree looks as if it sort of still is, continues growing but just out of frame. And as Bob Ross used to say, anyone can paint. It just takes a little bit of practice and um, learning about your materials. Um, in his case, it was oil paint. Here with watercolour paint, it's mostly a matter of learning about the ratios of water to paint to use for particular parts of the picture, i.e. more paint um, for darker areas, usually at the front of the painting, and more water for paler areas to give aerial perspective towards the back of the painting. Now here I've mixed up quite a watery mixture of um, all those colours really. I've got a little bit of blue in there and I'm just going to paint in a distant mountain. I'm using a three quarter inch flat brush for this just to get it in very loosely and quickly across the background. I probably should have put that in before the trees, but I think I can just about sneak it in behind those mid ground trees. Just darkening it up a little bit, just slightly darker along the base of that mountain. And then I'm going to bring some blue across with dry brush if I can get it across there. Um, for either a distant lake or distant snow plains. Just going to be a suggestion of a snowy landscape. Just going to now just darken up a little bit more, maybe the indication of a sort of far distant tree line um, just at the base of those hills or mountains. Maybe just again a hint of some trees on the top of the ridge. Just a bit of texture in there, something and nothing really, just to indicate the shape of the hills. Now using a slightly richer mixture of the sepia, Payne's grey and the blue, but on the brown side, I'm just strengthening up some of the shadows and textures in the foreground, um, just to give the indication of the shadows and maybe the bits of stubby undergrowth between the banks of snow. Again, using the three quarter inch flat brush. Now I'm just going to use the tips of the Harky brush with a little bit of the cobalt blue and cerulean blue and just kind of introduce a little bit of the bright blue into the snowbank shadows uh, just to add a bit more sparkle and to just bring out the white of the paper a little bit more, soften it back a bit where it's a bit too bright. Now that stage is done, I'm just going to leave it to dry completely. Now the next part, as Bob Ross would say, is your, it's time for your bravery test. We're going to put in a big tree, not as big a tree as Bob liked to do. Um, I'm not quite as brave as Bob, so my bravery test is slightly less onerous. Um, but I'm going to put in a foreground tree over this side and I'm going to paint it exactly the same way, for the most part, as the midground trees. Um, using a slightly larger calligraphy brush, it's not much bigger, and it does the same sort of job. I'm using the same mix of paint, um, changing my colours and the direction of my brush strokes as I build up from the top downwards, just trying to sort of get in this uh, foreground conifer 
just dotting and dabbing with uh, with the brush and changing colors as I come down but this time I'm trying to keep my paint nice and rich and dark because this is a foreground tree so I want it to uh, be a little bit darker um, and a bit more detailed I suppose in a way than the distant trees but it's not going to be too detailed it's still going to be very loosely painted And if I can't get it dark enough the first time, once it's dried, I can add a little bit more paint um, to it in the same sort of way. Just um, dry a wet paint on dry just to bring out some more detail. I'm going to keep working, adding bits of um, water to the brush just to soften off edges here and there and to allow the paint to, to blend and mix on the page dipping into slightly different colours just to add some nice variety to it and I'm going to bring it down to until it sits on this bank. Just going to use a squirrel mop and some of the browns of sepia mix just to uh, bed it into that bank there and add a bit of shadow um, underneath the tree. Just going to go back in while the paint's still wet, see if I can drop in a few more darks and a little bit more colour and texture variety into the body of the tree. Just kind of, um, it's sort of a dotting and dabbing with the calligraphy brush. It's got a lovely point. These are really cheap, generic Chinese, unbranded uh, brushes that are, that are very easy to find, either singly or in sets online. And they are lovely for painting sort of ragged, loose trees like this. And this is my clean, damp, um, small squirrel mop. I'm just softening back a little bit, just softening so that I've got a nice base to maybe add a bit more detail on. And then just going to tweak the foreground a little bit until I feel like it looks the way I want it to look. I'm going to try maybe to paint a bit of sort of bit more shadow a little bit more contrast in there maybe some more shadow underneath the tree I think it might be a little bit too much so I'm just going to wipe across there with a tissue while the paint's still wet just just gently and just lift a little bit of that off and now with the rigger brush I'm just going to put in a few sticks and twigs from the foreground on either side of this tree uh, just kind of the, like the remains of maybe dis deciduous trees and bushes that have lost their leaves just to contrast against the the, the, the leafy conifers um, that of course keep their leaves all year round trying to keep my marks quite random, um, flicking off the pressure um, at the end of the strokes with the rigger so that the branches taper out and get a bit thinner towards the ends.
Sorry, my hand's in the way there, can't be helped. I think you can more or less see what I'm doing there. Just a few more branches, just leaning across into the picture, just to sort of draw the eye maybe, and maybe a few little bits of grasses poking up through the snow. I'm not sure what size this rigger is. Uh, the paint's come off the handle. Uh, I think it's probably about a size two or maybe a three. A medium size rigger, I'd say. Just a few sticks and twigs around the base. Now I've got my number one rigger, I think it is. Um, just for some finer, slightly smaller twigs or sticky trees, just between these mid-ground trees. Just to add a little bit more interest to that tree line there. And now with my large Chinese Haki brush, just going to sweep a bit of um, Payne's Grey and Sepia, quite dark, very thick paint, across the foreground, bottom left corner, just to darken that up. And now I'm going to leave it to dry completely. Right, it's completely dry now. Um, I've re-taped it because it buckles a little bit, so I've re-taped it down to flatten it out. And I'm now just going to go in onto the dry paint with my with some rich paint and I'm just going to paint in some um, foreground branches, some of the sort of foreshortened branches that come out from the tree towards us, if you know what I mean, and to add in some sort of darks, a little bit more shape to this foreground tree. Now, if you want to, you could go in with a stippling brush or something like that and at the end you could add some white gouache to this to put some snow on your trees. Um, I'm not going to do that this time. I quite like the trees as they are. They look as if there's a hint of snow on them but they've sort of shed most of their snow, I think. But as I say, it would look great with... Um, with white gouache on it so please feel free to do that um, if you want to make your painting even more Christmassy. Now I'm just going to add in a few shadows for these trees just faintly across the ground just to bed them into the ground a little bit more and then I'm going to put a bit of um, sort of an indication of shadows underneath this larger tree. I think that's um, that'll be it just about finished. Yep, just a little bit of shadow there with a the harky brush. So here's the finished painting. Let's take off the tape, peeling it off away from the painting so it doesn't accidentally tear into the painting. Um, and I always like this moment when the tape comes off and you see this nice clean white border, um, and which is why as well I like to paint off over the tape and it sort of makes the painting look quite complete. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Bob Ross style painting and I hope you'll give it a go and I wish you a Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for all your support over this year and wishing you all season's greetings, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate, may it be good and may next year be much better for all of us. Take care, see you soon and happy painting. Bye.